Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Uh, we are going to talk about another library that we will use extensively in our uh, as we go about our training right and uh, it has some very handy annotations that reduce the amount of boilerplate code that the developers need to write right so without any further delay let's just get down to uh, exploring that library right so uh, as we saw in the previous videos that we are reading this message from the application.properties file and sending it back in the response right i've just cleaned up some of the code that was there as part of the previous videos because it's not relevant uh, for this particular video so as you can see i'm just returning a string i've removed the auto wiring that we had for the gateway interface we will come back to that in case we need to right so but let's see how we can uh, pass a more complex object here rather than just a string right so let's say if we want to return a, a proper message right instead of just a string i want to pass a, a complex object which could be like uh, a, a couple of attributes inside uh, a class right so let's just create uh, a package called model uh, model will house all our pojos which uh, we will either re re receive as a request or we will send back as a response to the rest endpoints that we expose right so this will be the package where we store all our request and response objects right and we will just call uh, let's say a hello message right and you can call it response hello message response uh, and you can have any name for that matter. I'm just calling it hello uh, message response because it's going to be the response object for the hello endpoint that we have written, right? So I'm just adding this uh, class here and I'll just, uh, let's say define two attributes, uh, the message, firstly the message, right? And the other is, let's say the name, right? Why not? So just with these two simple attributes, what I'm going to do is I'm coming back to the service class, right? And I'm going to auto wire uh, this or rather without even auto wiring. Let me just try to create a new object. Let me just do it conventionally without, uh, right? So I'll just call hello response equal to new hello message response. Right, and I'm setting this hello message response dot, and I want to set those values, right? But I do not see neither the name nor the message, right? And that is because we're going to touch upon some of the Java concepts here that this attribute, or basically both these attributes, are private, right? So these attributes are not available outside the scope of this class, right? So if we want to uh, basically uh, set or get the values of these attributes we'll have to create the getter and setters for these right getter and setter methods i'm sure uh, you would have uh, a bit of understanding of what getter and setter methods are and if you're not then probably go through some very basic uh, uh, you know java uh, fundamentals uh, and refresh these uh, basic concepts around uh, java right uh, so so with the help of my editor, I have been able to create the getter and setter methods for this particular uh, class or basically for all these attributes which are private in nature. So you see the getter and setter methods are public, which means I should be able to access uh, these getter and setter methods here, right? So as you can see, now I'm able to see the set message here. So I will just... Uh, you know pass the same as hard coded message or i could probably set this message from the hello message uh, field that we have up right and similarly what i'll do is i'll do a hello message response dot set name now since we do not have a name attribute let me just put any name here for that matter right mohit is a friend of mine so i'll just set this over here and uh, instead of returning a string what we'll do is we will actually return this response here, right? So, which means I'll have to now return this particular object as part of the response. 
but I can't just do it in the service class, right? Uh, as you would assume that the controller class, which is actually calling the service class, will now start getting this compilation issue because this method is also returning a string. So we'll have to change this method's uh, return type as well. So I'll just import this and now it's all good. Uh, this endpoint also returns a hello message response, right? So organize all your imports and it is compiling. Let's quickly run the application. Okay, the application is started. Let me quickly go to the browser and check if we are able to see localhost 8080b1 hello and it says hello world test and Mohit name is Mohit, right? So basically, as you can see, whatever we had set in the service class is actually uh, coming in the response now, right? Now, this is how we will re return a proper uh, JSON response. So as you can see, this format is a JSON format, right? So this is how we will uh, return a proper JSON document in the response objects for all the rest endpoints that we will expose. Right, but that's not the intention of this video. The intention of this video is basically to see how we can, uh, you know, reduce the boilerplate code that we'll have to write. So if you look at this response uh, class, all these uh, functions need to be written. And if a, if a class has around 20 or 25 fields, this will become huge, right? writing data setter methods can be very troublesome, especially if the editor does not support automatic generation. And even if it does, right, it's a lot of boilerplate code that we end up writing. So in order to avoid that, uh, there are libraries available, right? And one of them, which is very popular library is called Lombok, right? So we will just add that Lombok library as well here. So what I'll do is I've come to the pom.xml file where we maintain all our dependencies. If you remember, we spoke about this uh, in our very first uh, Hello World video where we had seen that the pom.xml file, which is uh, created by default, and it will maintain all the libraries that your application or the microservice is going to use, right? So we'll just uh, add another dependency here, right? And I'll just start typing Lombok. Right, so because I'm using the uh, IntelliJ Ideas uh, Ultimate Edition, I have a lot of these auto-complete features available, which allow me to quickly select the library that I'm interested in. Right, but uh, if you do not have, uh, then you may have want to just type it down. If if the editors that you are using do not have these auto-complete features, you might just want to type it. Right, and uh, so once you have copy pasted or typed this. Uh, you just have to build the project once again. So if you see this uh, icon here, uh, at least for IntelliJ IDEA, this is the icon that says that you have changes which have not been built, right? So I have to click on that icon and it starts building it again. 